right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm joined by T Tony Perzo, who is literally up the road in LA. How are you doing, Tony? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me, John. Yeah, and Tony's a seasoned expert in negotiation, persuasion, and influence with a track record of transforming over 20,000 individuals into proficient negotiators. Yeah. His expertise has been sought by organizations like Apple, Red Bull, Intel, Microsoft, and many others. Mm -hmm. And you are a dynamic presenter, been around the world, sharing invaluable insights on mastering the art of negotiation and achieving unparalyzed, unpar unparalyzed, unparalleled <laughs> success in business and beyond. I hope it's unparalyzed. Yeah. Yes. And what we're going to talk about today is persuasion and influence. Yes. So, um, Tony, let's define a little bit, you know, what you mean by uh, per persuasion and influence, because I feel like influence as a term has gotten so... Um, it's, it's yeah. so many different interpretations now and we have influencers and we have this and and uh, and I don't think people understand like the, the maybe the the fundamentals of what influence really is. Well, that's a that's a really good question. Um, well, the way I see it, it, it's like, how do we how do we um, how do we get people to uh, say yes to us and. Um, and so that's the way I see. And how do we how do we become more enrolling? How do how can we get enroll people to um, our point of view or to our product or to our service or to our channel? Or mm -hmm. I mean, it, big pictures. How do we get people to say to say yes to what we're saying and mm -hmm. what what we're wanting? Um, and like, but when you think of that, it can be rather manipulative, right? Uh, like how do we get someone yeah. to, to, to do what we want? And so I think there's a lot of manipulation going on out there and a lot of people calling themselves influencers. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're using a lot of m manipulative tactics and, uh, and strategies. And there's not a lot of ethics. There's not a lot of kind of ethical behavior. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously there's some, but like, I think if I, if, so that, that's kind of like, I think the, 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 yeah. that's, kind, that's kind of like what people think of influence or persuasion. What I think of it is I think of persuasion and influence as a, a language map. It's a, it's a, it's a coding, uh, for our mind. So uh, Dr. Kahneman's research, which he, he won a Nobel prize in the early two thousands, he says, we have two brains, we have two minds, we have system one and we have system two. Kind of like the subconscious and uh, and right. conscious minds, and I'm not going to bore everybody with the, the fundamentals of these these different types of minds. But system one is basically responsible for 98% of our our decisions, and system one it's error prone. We live in a, a world that's very fast, and it's getting mm -hmm. faster and faster and faster. And our system two brain, which is our conscious mind, which is a, a slow brain, it's methodical. So if I were to ask you what's four plus four right away you have the answer. That's system one. System one's mm -hmm. very fast. But if I were to say what's 13,000 times 678, you have to use your system two brain, right, which right. is very slow. So because the world is so fast, we're more reliant on our system one, on our fast brain. And that fast brain doesn't respond to logic. It doesn't respond to what we think as like, this makes sense. Our system one, I kind of identify, I kind of, it's like speaking to a child. We got to use very simple kind of wording, uh, verbiage. We got to, we got to use a different type of communication for our fast brain, for our system one mm -hmm. brain. And that language, the language, the coding for system one, for that part of our, for that, for, our, for, for that part of our brain, um, are the principles of persuasion and influence. Right. And right. so, so that's what I, so it's how do we speak to our, our system one brain? How do we think to our, how do we speak to our fast brain? And as the world speeds up and gets more technologically, technologically advanced, and we're going to have to, people are going to have to start learning more and more how to speak this language of system right. one. How do you, how do you speak the language of shortcuts? Right, right. Yeah. No, no, that's a that's an excellent point. Wow. Yeah. And, and I guess going back, uh, picking up on what you said at the beginning, then, 
how do you how then do you do this without falling into the trap of manipulation or people yes. feel because eventually i feel like eventually people kind of wake up to them i mean not all people but some people yeah. wake up to the fact that they have been manipulated and it's not you know and therefore you're not going to get a second chance at manipulating no. someone no absolutely yeah so here's the thing and I, I talk about this all the time one of my one of my great uh mentors teachers um uh is uh he's a he's a, he's a yogi pa parahamsa yogananda he wrote the book uh autobiography of a yogi so uh, that book became famous by um by uh um what's his name uh steve jobs uh right. found, yeah, founder of apple in fact everybody who showed up to his funeral got a copy of autobiography of the Yo of a yogi it was the only book on his ipad mm -hmm. and um so it's a, it's a incredible if anybody out there wants to read an incredible book it's it's one of the, the top books out there and he, yogananda said that we don't achieve success we become success so it's not like you know so a lot of people out there are trying to achieve achieve muscle push get and when you approach persuasion and influence in that way of course it's going to come across as unethical of course you might get lucky a few times you might get what you want a few times but in the long run it's going to come back and haunt you right so uh it's i i think it's not about achieving influence which a lot of people in the world are it's about becoming how do we become influential? Mm. And and uh, so let me give you an example. One 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 of the one of the uh, one of the principles of uh, of persuasion and influence is 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 reciprocity. So it's yeah. like, hey, John, if I want you to say yes to me, I need to give you a gift. Get you give you something. Give you some sort of gift that's customized, that's unexpected. And if I give you a gift, you're more likely to say yes to me because no matter what culture you, you grew up in, we're all trained that if someone gives you something, you got to repay them, right? So mm -hmm. that's system one. That's our that's our mm -hmm. fast brain. These are the shortcuts our brains use, okay? So obviously manipulative, right? I'm, 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 not, giving it, I'm not giving you these things out of the goodness of my heart. I'm giving right. you these things to get something from you. So my work, and it's hard work, and it's about creating these paradigm shifts so it's not about like giving to get i mean if we look at this principle of reciprocity um this persuasion principle it's been talked about it's been talked about for thousands of years i mean our great mystics and our saints and our great scriptures the torah the bible the Bhagavad Gita, our great yogis have all talked about the power of giving the power mm -hmm. of being of service, the power of tithing, give, give, give. And it's, they are, these wisdom traditions, our elders have been giving us this advice for thousands of years. So it's nothing new, but I think there's something new. It's that it's, it's about, if we want to become influential, we need to practice giving, being generous people and uh, giving without getting anything yeah. in return. So if we practice giving, if we practice generosity in our life, if we make generosity a habit in our life, and that's something that I've done because I don't think with my upbringing and my family, that wasn't something that was pushed to me. It wasn't something that was taught to me. Be generous in your life. I was taught, hold on to what you got. Hold on to your money. Hold on to all that because one day you might not have of it. So, so like, don't, don't give it away very easily. <laughs> and I've been practicing my life being generous and giving and trusting. And I think that's where the shift comes in. That's how we become yeah. influential. That's how, when we become generous people, we become more influential as opposed to saying, hey, I'm going to give you this free ebook to get yeah, you to yeah. say yes to me. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. 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 No, yeah. it's really in interesting about that, uh, Tony. Is uh, Yeah. My, my late father used to say, uh, having enough is more than enough. Uh -huh. Yeah. Was yeah, what they, he lived by. But it's um, coming back to what you were saying there. It's like, yeah, the 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 give to get, and the you know the the idea of you know that means you're living in a in a in a finite world. You're not living in a world of abundance. You're thinking, okay, yes. I've, I've got to compete. But the other thing you mentioned there, I think, is this idea of modeling modeling behavior, and that's the thing that I I I I, I see a lot. It's like you see all of these 
apps, you know, next door and everything. You see people ranting and raving each other about politics, right? Shouting at each other. And yeah. to be honest, nobody has ever persuaded somebody to change the way they believe or act by shouting at them and telling them they're stupid, right? <laughs> what right. works is when you see somebody modeling behaviors and you say, yeah. oh, that person looks happy. That person looks fulfilled. I want to be like that person. Yes, absolutely. And that's, I think that's what's missing. Um, in the corporate world, absolutely. And mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm all up in the corporate world, right? And mm -hmm. these are, these are the clients I'm working with and what I'm, and um, yeah. And like the message, when I first started off, I was teaching the tactics, the, I was teaching the negotiation tactics, the buyer tactics, how to countermeasure buyer tactics. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes these tactics were manip how to play the game, right? Yeah. And, and I start and, you know, and I've just in my own life and in and during my career, I've just noticed that, hey, I, I, I want to help create better human beings. And um, and if we can start modeling behavior, that is behavior that's been, again, been talked about, has been has been passed down to us for thousands of years, um, then we we become better human beings. Mm -hmm. And by becoming better human beings, I, I prefer the word, instead of persuasion influence, I pr prefer the word magnetism. How do we become more magnetic mm -hmm. in our life? How do we, but it's not about getting to become, achieving magnetism. It's about how do we become magnetism in action? How do we, right. how do we become walking magnetism? How do we, how do we walk in the streets and have things come towards us? I'm sorry. How do we yeah. come? How, how do we have things come towards us? How do we magnetize what we want in life? How do we magnetize yeses? And we do that by not worrying about getting the yeses. We do that by by practicing uh, being a magnetic person. Mm -hmm. By by becoming that, by being magnetic, we then get everything we want. So yeah. like yeah. So again, generosity is one of them. But like and again, this this idea scarcity is it's a big one that's being used in the world yeah. right now, right? There's only five left. You yeah. only get one hour, right? Yeah. It work. It's a powerful principle. The you know we we're we're, we're more motivated by by loss than we are by gain. Mm -hmm. And then salespeople are being trained to, of loss framing and and talk to your don't talk about features and benefits. Talk about what they'll lose out on, right? Mm -hmm. So again, the and these are these are these are principles that are, are being taught everywhere. But the way I look at scarcity is that, okay, well, scarcity is about becoming, is about being unique. If your product or your solution is unique, then yeah. more people are going to want it because they can't get anywhere else. Mm -hmm. So instead of saying, instead of trying to achieve or trying to, uh, trying to like achieve uniqueness, how do we become, how do we become unique ourselves? How do mm -hmm. we make ourselves unique? And and that all comes down to this big word right now is you know authenticity, right? Yeah. How do we become how do we be our authentic selves? And that's becoming authentic, being ourselves, cherishing who we are, knowing that there's only one Tony in the world. Yep. And I shouldn't be anybody else but that one Tony. Right there, I am practicing the scarcity principle mm -hmm. because I'm accepting and I'm promoting and I'm showing the world this is who I am, no matter whether you like me or not. And but this is who I am. Yeah. And right there, people who are like that, who don't give a shit, right, are very magnetic people because, again, they're practicing their this this very powerful uh, principle of of scarcity. Easier mm -hmm. said than done. Being authentic is sure. very you know, and a lot of work has to go into that. But it's work it's work worth taking. So yeah. if you want to become more persuasive and influential in your life, it's not about achieving these quick fixes, but it's about huh. How do we practice and model this behavior so that we can become walking persuasion in action, walking yeah. influence in action, right? Yeah, no, no, I love it. And as I, I always quote uh, my compatriot, Oscar Wilde, who said, you know, mm. uh, be yourself because everybody else is taken. Yeah. Uh, and, and, I think, and I think it's right. And I think the thing about authenticity, Tony, I think, though, yeah. is you need to start off with like looking at who who are you i mean who yeah. am i as a person yeah. like who who is my authentic self and maybe spend a little time on a little bit of self reflection to yeah. allow myself to to uh, unveil my authentic self uh, because you know we we've gotten so used to hiding behind things personas you know yes. we're one persona here we're one persona there so getting yeah. back to who we really are takes a little bit of introspection it does, and um, and it takes looking at our programming, right? We've all been programmed as as children. Um, I think we, we come out in this world as these perfect little babies, 
And then all of a sudden the world gets its hands on us, our <laughs> parents, and then they start programming us. And oftentimes with the wrong programming, we become programmed to be something that is so far away from who we're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And then so really the work authenticity is about returning back to ourselves. It's not about finding ourselves. We're not like a, a $10 bill lost in our coat pocket. Mm -hmm. It's about uh, returning to ourselves, who we were before the world got its hands on us. And like, I'm, I might go, I might be getting a little esoteric or a little out there yeah. right now, but if we look at like, so, I mean, mental, mental health is at an, an all time low right now. I mean, depression and anxiety, loneliness, PTSD, trauma. I mean, we haven't, it's, it's, I mean, we're hitting a rock bottom yeah. and, and, but the amazing thing is we have, we have all these we have all these breakthrough therapies now now coming through to help we're, we're realizing that this the, the old dsm model which is like labeling people well you've got these clusters of symptoms then you have adhd or mm -hmm. you have bipolar or you have clinical depression there's we're, we're leaving that model because we're realizing that model doesn't really work or really help us and the, even like the talk therapy speaking to your shrink for the for the next 30 years hey, it's nice having someone to speak to but it's not necessarily that effective and what we're finding is that a lot of these breakthrough therapies, for example, one that's making headline news is, is psychedelic assisted therapy, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and then, and they're, they're studying these, these compounds, these, uh, the psilocybin and these, these different compounds and they're becoming legal, but they're studying them at Johns Hopkins and at these different kind of research institutions and what they're finding, and this is, which is, I think this is fascinating. So what they're finding is that we have a, a, a place in our brain, it's called the default mode network and the default mode network is responsible for answering the question, who am I? It's the me, myself, and I network. It's the self-referential network. And they find that when people are under the influence, or when people are in these non-ordinary states on these, psych these psychedelics that were used as recreational drugs in the 60s. And right, right. Right? But when people are under the influence, uh, the place in their brain that starts lighting up when they're attached to all these different sensors, when it starts lighting up, is the default mode network. So what we're finding is that People who are who are finding relief from years and years of depression and anxiety, what they're finding is that what's happening is that people are going to these non-ordinary states and they're realizing because this area in the brain that lights up, which is responsible for who for answering the question, who am I? Mm -hmm. Because that area lights up, people they're realizing that, oh, what's happening in these journeys is that people are realizing, oh. All these things that mom taught me, that dad taught me, that my priest, that my rabbi, that my teachers, that my all these things they said about me are all bullshit. They're they're not true. And people start realizing, well, if that's not true, then what is true? Mm -hmm. Who am I? And these things, all these, all these conversations are having in the default mode network. So what they're realizing is that people are are leaving behind years and years of, of mental health problems and depression, and anxiety, because what they're realizing, what they're they're coming out of these journeys is they're realizing who they are. They're realizing, oh, my authentic self. And they now have an opportunity to start living in integrity with who they really are. And mm -hmm. once that starts happening, all these mental health issues oftentimes start start disappearing. Yeah. So, I mean, we're seeing the importance and, and this is part of the breakthrough therapies that are happening right now. These, this authenticity, is it's a big word. It's a buzzword. But there's a lot of depth to it and there's a lot of truth to it about hey we got to start living in integrity with who we, we are and who i am even if it might not look good to certain people out there in my family or in my circle or on linkedin even, yeah yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah yeah no i think i think that's an excellent excellent point uh yeah. tony and i think uh, I mean, people can discover it in their own lives. I mean, in terms of, I mean, we've all had incidences or seen and people, you know, get something happens in a meeting that's really innocuous, but it really upsets somebody or you get really upset about it and whatever. Yeah. And you can't understand why. And it turns out that maybe it's a tri it's, it's a trigger from your past or something yeah. nonsensical that that is so deeply rooted that it can just throw you off completely. And I think any any time you can start to sort of identify and push those aside is is a good is allows more and more of you to come out yes absolutely and here but the thing is you know and this is like i i do negotiation seminars and obviously mm -hmm. relationships is a big is a, is a big part of it and i i have people do this kind of negative transference thing so like i i give this one um this one case study in one of my seminars where 
people is it's forcing people to deadlock. So it's a team negotiation, three versus three. And what winds up happening is that people get really pissed off at each other. And it's mm -hmm. designed to get people to get pissed off at each other. And then um, and and then I have a whole conversation about, well, how do we get along with one another? And how do we oftentimes when we deadlock in a negotiation has nothing to do uh, with the product or service or with the pricing. It has everything to do with ourselves or our own, our own triggers. And, mm. and then I'll, I'll do this negative transference where I, I say, hey, pick somebody out in the, in, in, the, the, in the group you were negotiating with who pissed you off, who, um, who, who irritated you, or even use me. Right now, you know, a lot of you, I, I, I'm in a room with 100 people right now. There's going to be 100 different um, perspectives mm. of who I am, right? So like one of, some of you are going to hate me. For some reason or another, you're going to hate me. So I'm like, and then I, I, I bring them through this whole negative transference, which is like basically saying who the person that you, who's irritating you, who do they remind you of from your past? Right. Mom, dad. And then, and, and then if they, and then what, and then once that, once they irritated you, what did you then do? Like what patterns did you then go into? Did you be become quiet? Did you become small? Did you walk away? Did you just shut your mouth? And who did that remind you of? Who used to do that in your family? And when people start making the connections, oh my God, it has nothing to do with Charlie, but I'm just reacting. It's like as if I put a cardboard cutout of my mom or my father in mm -hmm. front of Charlie, it's the lights start going on for some. And then some people call me a cult leader. What the hell? You <laughs> know? And, and, and that's, and that's my challenge is like, I just yeah. did a seminar for a fortune 100 company. And um, I brought in a lot of these concepts of transference. Sure. I talked about psychedelics and the default mode network and the importance of answering this question, who am I? And some people are just not ready uh, to hear these things. They feel a lot safer on LinkedIn, where, mm -hmm. again, we have these very cookie cutter, robotic, mm -hmm. hey, I'm, a, I'm a, a thought leader in the corporate world and do A, B, and C and read this book and use these yeah. tactics. And uh, you'll be okay. And the world is changing, and the business yeah. world is changing. And um, and uh, so we got to start doing things differently. Obviously, look at the state of the world out there, right? Yeah, no, I, I I I I agree completely. And yeah. it and it is funny how all these things affect. I mean, I went to uh, I went to the dentist a while back, and uh, he he sat down because he wanted to do a. He said, "Oh, we haven't done a catch up consultation in a while, whatever." And he goes, yeah. he goes. Um, what do you, uh, how do you feel about going to the dentist? And I said, I hate it. I said, the minute I walk through the door, I revert to being about 10 years old and I'm just waiting to be lectured by you. Yeah. He, was saying, he said, but we don't lecture you here. And I said, it doesn't matter. I said, that's my, I said, the minute you, I said, because it's the place we go, you rarely give us positive feedback. <laughs> yeah. Normally you tell us what we're not doing right. Yeah. And he was laughing, but I was just la laughing too, because I'm saying literally I could go from, she said, from, you know, negotiating a deal or doing something over here to walking down the street to the dentist and suddenly I'm 10 years old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it, it, it happens to all of us, right? Yeah. It, ha it happens to all of us. And like, and we need to start being, and we, I know, and we're, we're talking about like, you know, diversity and how do we get along mm -hmm. better and stuff like that. And like one of the conversations we need to start having within the walls of these, these major organizations is the sensitivity towards these things and like mm -hmm. being able to, you know, being able to, I, I had a, a, I had a workshop at, at this, at this company and I was talking about persuasion and I was talking about one of the principles of, of unity, right? And like unity is like, Hey, if I want you to get say, say yes to me, John, yeah. I just need to find some, somehow where we're cut from the same cloth. We're yeah. from the same neighborhood. We like the same team, uh, you know, some, something that shows that we're, we're, we're of each other, you know, not mm -hmm. similar, but we're of each other. We're, we're made from the same material. And, but like, again, if you look at the depth of that, if you look at unity, um, I mean, I mean, unity has been, is, is, you know, the, I think the reason why we still listen to Bob Marley today is because yeah. he sings about unity. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so I was talking about unity and like part of, and unity, if we, if we want to become, if we want to incorporate this principle of unity in our life and become more magnetic ourselves, then what we need to start doing is start being vulnerable. And start asking for help and saying, hey, we're all one. I'm you, you're me. I'm not better, you're not worse. And being that walking, you know, walking as that and saying, hey, I need your help being vulnerable. This is what's going on in my life. Mm -hmm. I'm suffering or I'm dealing with this. Yep. And we'd had this conversation. And all of a sudden, all these people 
who are like, you know, sales and inside sales and HR and stuff like that, they start talking about, well, I don't feel safe talking about my depression or my anxiety yeah. at work because I'm afraid I'll get fired or I'll, I'll mm. or people will judge me. And um, so, and then everybody, it just, it was, a, I just sat down and this 45 minute conversation happened amongst everybody in the room talking about this issue, this problem. And that was unity right there. Everybody was opening up, right? Yeah. So yeah. again, one of the principles of persuasion is this, it's being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And when you're vulnerable, you become more magnetic. You get more of what you want in life when you're, when yeah. you're vulnerable. And, um, and these are the, I think these are the kind of conversations we yeah. need to start having. Right? No, ab absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more, Tony. And I think yeah. um, and we can certainly talk more about the mental health one another time. Cause I do sure. think that we need to, we need to finally overcome that last hurdle. It's like, I always say to people, like if I come in tomorrow to work with a broken leg, mm -hmm. you go, Oh, John, what happened? And you go, Oh, blah, blah, blah. blah. You, uh, uh, you don't go, Hmm. I never, I'm going to look at John differently from now on. He must have yeah. weak bones. But yeah. if I come in and I say, well, like I've had like depression issues or anything, you immediately look at me differently. And that's what, and that's the piece we have to overcome. We have to stop separating out physical and mental and thinking that they're somehow different. You know, that everything, yes. everything has a cause and effect or reason, symptoms, treatment, yeah. et cetera. You know, I mean, I don't know this, my, my, my son who's, who's 10 um, has been uh, getting into, trouble at school just like like not listening to his teachers mm -hmm. and uh like doesn't just authority is not having problems yeah. with authority <laughs> at home with with me with his mom he's great but at school he doesn't let you know and so he's been getting into trouble and the LAUSD so the you know yeah. the, they're very quick to diagnose again these labels this DSM sure. well he's got the, some sort of defiant disorder or <laughs> ah. uh and there's medication that he could be taking for that um and throwing around ADHD and all these things. Sure. And um, so this is what I, and this is what I've done. And this is what I do with myself. And I was just like, okay, well, obviously there's a part of my son. There's some, there's a part of him. We all have parts. We all have, yeah, it's, it's almost like we have multiple personality. Mm -hmm. Some people actually act these out and, but all of us have these different parts in, in our head. And, and so I'm like, and I just asked him, I'm like, Hey son, I'm, uh, his name's Rocky. I said, Rocky, I'm like, uh, describe this part who doesn't like listening to people describe him. And he was able to say, like, he said, Oh, he's, his name's Gary. He's in his thirties. <laughs> this is what he looks like. He's got blonde hair, blah, 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 blah. And I just helped him kind of develop a relationship with this part of him who's defined. And right. I said, and I said, Rocky I said, how do you feel about, he says, I, I hate him. My <laughs> son was I hated Gary. And mm. obviously, so I was like, the conversation with me and him has been about like, okay, well, we got to start talking to Gary with more compassion and like tell Gary that we're going to be his friend. And I bet you, once you start loving Gary and, and being compassionate towards Gary, uh, then uh, then Gary's going to start kind of shutting up a little bit more. Mm. And sure enough, uh, it has. I haven't had a we haven't had a problem in maybe three weeks. And yesterday, I get a call from his principal, and and my whole conversation with Rocky was about with, was about Gary. And I didn't get angry at him for acting out. I just said, yeah. okay, uh, well, let's talk to Gary. And I had a we had a whole conversation with Gary. And hey, and I told my my son, my son told Gary that like, hey, let me take the reins today. I know you're angry, but I'm here for you. I like you. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing. It's amazing what starts happening once we start kind of treating our less than spectacular parts, you know, if we start treating it with compassion yeah. and and love and self-love and all that, what happens, especially with children. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, the broken leg yeah exactly i think it's the same kind of thing we got to start having more compassion for people and mm. uh and for ourselves and it starts with ourselves right it no. starts with ourselves yeah. absolutely absolutely well i think a uh, good thing coming out of this tony i think you yeah. just uh you just diagnosed the whole of the um, Irish race because I think we all, I think we all, I think we all were born yep. with de with defiant disorder. I think it's a national trait. <laughs> yeah. well, there's you guys can buy there's a lot of medication for that, guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. Where we yeah. sell, okay, so we're good. <laughs> well. Um, I'm sorry. This was supposed to be a conversation about persuasion and influence. I think it turned into something a little bit uh, deeper. So I, I hope people are not like, oh, these, these guys from California, my God. But yeah, yeah, but yeah, I think I, I hope it was helpful. I mean, there's there's a lot more to these principles, right? There's yeah. a lot of depth. And I think we need to start becoming a little bit more deep.
I, I, yeah. I agree with you, Tony. Yeah. That's why we decided to run a little longer because we were going deep and I thought yeah. it was worthwhile. So listen, all of Tony's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Yeah, so I, I teach uh, negotiation, persuasion and influence and uh, to, to, to big companies. And I'm uh, and I'm personally moving into a new direction myself. Everything I spoke about in this video is a message I want to start getting across to people. So um, and I recently I went I, I won't take up too much more time, but recently I went to a, um, a seminar a business, as a, an attendee and a hundred this seminar comes 110 years old, like books have been written right so i was just like my god the corporate seminar the corporate workshop it's been it's, it's the same it's been the same thing for for 50 years it needs to be turned on its head so my yeah. mission right now is to take these kind of corporate business success workshops and seminars and and make them uh, a little bit more interesting and make them more dynamic and put them in settings instead of putting them in the marriott banquet room Oh yeah. Right. Why not we put it somewhere where we can have like we can bring in breath work and maybe do a yoga class and do some ice pl cold plunges and sauna and then do a workshop and have some good food and then have some interesting conversations and be vulnerable. So um that's that's where I'm at. I'm trying to we, we need we need a, we needed a new type of workshop and seminar yeah. out there and, and that's what Absolutely. I'm trying to do. So yeah. Fantastic. Okay. Well, listen, as I said, all of Tony's information will be below here. So please go check yeah. it out. Thanks again, Tony. Thank you for thank you.